Okay, um, so this video is meant for uh, geometry of a quest uh, on either Monday or Tuesday. So this is a rather longer review. I think the problems are shorter, but um, there's many problems on here to help you study for your quest. All right, so the first one, the measure of the angles of a triangle are an extended ratio of 4 to 3 to 2. What is the measure of the largest angle? So um, these are the three uh, angles. Let's multiply each number by x. So 3x or sorry, 4x to 3x to 2x. And now if these are the three expressions for the three angles, uh, the sum of a triangle is 180 degrees. That's the triangle angle sum theorem. So if I add 4x plus 3x plus 2x, I get 180. 4, 3, and 2 make 9x. Divide by 9, x is 20. And we want the largest angle, so the largest angle would be 4x. 4 times 20 is 80 degrees. Next, the design for a mural is 16 inches wide and 9 inches high. What are the dimensions of the largest possible complete mural that can be painted on the wall 24 feet wide by 14 feet high? Largest possible. This is one of those fit problems. So the first thing we do is we make sure we have the same units. And we don't. The original is in inches. The wall is in feet. Let's convert the feet into inches. Remember that one foot is 12 inches. So we will multiply 24 feet wide by 14 feet high. We're going to multiply each of those by 12 to get the number of inches that each of them is. And again, just to get our units the same. 24 times 12 is 288. And 14 times 12 is 168. So now our original mural is in inches and our space, our wall, is in inches. So now the second step is to find the fit. And when you do this, you pick the smaller. Okay, because we're looking for the scale factor. So if I look at the widths, the space is 288 inches wide. The actual design is 16 inches wide. I want to divide those. And I get 18. So that's the scale factor that I would use to fit the width. Now we go with the height. The uh, space is 168 inches high. I want a, a picture of 9 inches to go there. And we divide. And I get 18.66 repeated. That's bigger than 18, so I choose 18. 18 is my scale factor. That means 288 inches will be my width. So the third step is to find the other dimension. And to do that, I take the actual height of the mural, 9, and I multiply it by the scale factor 18. And 9 times 18 is 162 inches. And that will be the height that will fit 168 inches. So the mural is going to be actually 288 inches wide by 162 inches tall. Now, if you want to put them in feet, which would be better, you could divide them each by 12. So divide by 12. Again, using that 1 foot is 12 inches. When you go from inches, which is small, to feet, which is large, you divide. So 288 divided by 12 would give you 24 feet wide. And again, that is the actual width of the wall. We did fit the width by. And 162 divided by 12 is 13 and a half feet. So to me, that makes more sense because we don't really talk about hundreds of inches. We usually talk about feet. Um, so there you go. But either answer I would accept. That's how you see the largest design possible. Next, three. Find the value of x. Give the scale of factor for the polygons. It's very important, this right here. That's the similarity statement. Okay? Now, uh, my pictures are not oriented correctly, but because I have the similarity statement, I can just use the... Uh, I can use the lettering. So my x is in uh, nk. So if I want to set up a proportion to find x, I'm going to start with n 
K. Now, NK is the third and second letter, so use the third and second letter in the second one, P, R. Now, notice PR also has X, so both of these have X. And now I need to pick another pair of sides that I know both measures of. Well, it looks like you have all three uh, measurements for each polygon, so you can choose any pair of sides. I'm going to pick GM. I'm not going to pick the 8.4. Why would I do decimals? I'll pick GM first and last, so that corresponds to VT. And now I will plug in what I know. Uh, NK is 3X minus 2, PR is X plus 4, GM is 4, and VT is 3. I see plus signs and minus signs, so I will put that in parentheses. I will cross multiply 3 times 3X minus 2 equals 4 times X plus 4. I will uh, distribute 9X minus 6 equals 4X plus 16. I will subtract 4x to bring the x's to the left side where they'll be positive. 5x minus 6 equals 16. I will add 6 to both sides to get 5x equals 22. And I will divide by 5. 22 fifths is a good answer, but you could also divide and get the decimal. 22 divided by 5 is 4.4. So that's x, and then they want the scale factor. And since they have the triangles, or the, the quadrilaterals listed as g, k, and m first, I'm going to pick a side from g, k, and m, and it looks like I'm going to pick, so for the scale factor, I'm going to pick g, m. g, m corresponds to v, t, so that is, of course, how you find the scale factor. g, m is 4, v, t is 3, there's your scale factor, 4 to 3 ratio of a pair of corresponding sides. Four. Determine whether the triangles are similar. If so, write a similar statement. If not, explain. So I have two problems here. So we'll break it right down the middle. So the first problem here I'll do in, let's do it in orange. This is this one. And notice what they give me, the three sides. So I am in charge of determining whether these triangles are similar. And since they give me the three sides, I'll use side, side, side. Now, it's hard because the orientation is not the same. But the, the uh, numbers should line up small to small, medium to medium, large to large. So what I'm talking about is the following. If I start with triangle JKL, 32 is the smallest side. It has to correspond to the smallest side in the other triangle, which is 22. Then I come back. What's the middle side in JKL? Well, that's 45. It would have to correspond to the middle side in PRQ, and that would be 30. And then I'll come back to the first triangle. The largest is 60. The largest is 40. And now I will divide down 32 divided by 22. 1.45 doesn't end nicely. 45 divided by 30, 1.5. I can stop now. They're not equal. If I kept going, 60 divided by 40, that's also 1.5, but this guy screws it up. They are not proportional sides. Therefore, these two triangles are not similar. Okay, um, for the second one here, uh, let's take a look. I want to change this number, so please make sure you change this because I want this to work out. So I want to change this to 120 degrees, so please make sure you made that change. Okay, so uh, in this triangle, we're going to uh, look at the angle measures. And I see that, hey, I have uh, a pair of 35s. So I know that angle N is congruent to angle Y. I need a second pair. I have a 25 degree angle and a 120 degree angle. I need to find either angle U or angle R. Let's find angle U using the triangle angle sum. 25 plus 35 is 60. 180 minus 60 is 120. This angle U is 120. And what do I see? I see angle U is congruent to angle A, which is also 120. So that's a second pair of angles. These two triangles are similar. So I will write down triangle, and I'll name the first one um, S-U-N, sure, sun. 
similar to triangle. Now, what corresponds? S is not one of the congruent angles that I have given here. So it corresponds to uh, R, which I also have not talked about. U corresponds to A, because it's congruent to A, and N corresponds to Y, because it's congruent to Y. There you go, look at that, how cute. Sun and ray. So these two triangles are similar, and they are similar by angle-angle similarity. So that's the similarity statement, that's the reason why, and that's the work. Okay. All right, very good. Next one, five. We need to write a similarity statement based off of this picture. Now, if I look here, I have a right triangle with an altitude drawn. So in this right triangle, J, K, L, K is the right angle, mark J, angle 1, and L, angle 2. So I will call this triangle K, J, L. Now, if I look at, let's say, this medium triangle on the left, it has a right angle, it has angle 1, this angle must be angle 2. And since they are similar, I will name them in corresponding order, right angle 1 and then 2. Triangle N, J, K. And then in the small triangle, I have a right angle here at N, I have an angle 2 called K, angle 1. And in the small triangle, right angle, first angle, second angle, triangle, N, K, L. And there's your similar triangles. So remember, use those ones and twos to uh, f identify the corresponding angles. Six, find the geometric mean between these two numbers. So, uh, Remember the shortcut, the geometric mean is the square root of their product. So over here I take 9 and 7. 7 is not a perfect square, it does not break down, so leave it alone for a second. 9 is, 9 is 3 squared. So 9 is taken care of, the 7 doesn't break down, so circle it. So we are looking at the square root of 7 times 3 squared. Since the 3 is squared, it comes out. It goes away inside the square root, but the 7 stays 3 radical 7. There's your geometric mean. Uh, 7 here. We're going to find um, x, and I'm also going to throw on y as well. y is going to go right there. So to find x, look at where x is. It's here, and it's here. It is in the leg. So to find x, we are going to use the leg idea, which is corollary number two, which says that the leg is the geometric mean between the hypotenuse and the adjacent segment. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is opposite this right angle. The hypotenuse is right down here. I'll do it in orange. That's the hypotenuse. Now, part of it is 5 and part of it is x. So what is the hypotenuse? It's x plus 5, or 5 plus x. I like to put the x first, x plus 5, segment addition. So when I fill in this proportion, the hypotenuse is x plus 5. The legs are both x plus 2, x plus 2, and the adjacent segment is the one touching the leg. This x is the adjacent segment. So it's going to go right there, x. And now, I'm going to uh, cross multiply. When I cross multiply, uh, I will put these in parentheses. And I will get uh, x times x plus 5 equals x plus 2 times x plus 2. I get x squared plus 5x equals, when I FOIL, x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 4. Simplify each side, x squared plus 5x equals uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4. And now look at this real fast. This is a quadratic, but notice what's the same on both sides. x squared. Get rid of them. So now this problem is just 5x equals 4x plus 4. Subtract 4x. x equals 4. And there, there is your answer for x. x is 4. 
So now, when I want to find y, y is, and I'll draw a segment to it, y is the altitude. So to find y, I have to use the altitude, which is number 1. So I'm going to have to slide down here. So the altitude is the geometric mean between the hypotenuse parts, hypotenuse part 1, hypotenuse part 2. Those are the two segments on the hypotenuse, 5 and x. Now we know what x is, x is 4. So we're going to use that here. So my altitude is y, my hypotenuse part 1 is 5, and my hypotenuse part 2 is x, which we found is 4. So this is going to be y squared equals 5 times 4, square root, square root, up here. 5 times 4, 4 is 2 squared. 5 does not break down. y equals the square root of 5 times 2 squared. The 2 comes out because it is squared, and the 5 is left inside. And there is y. The next one here, we have three parallel lines cut by two transversals. This is an example of the corollary to the side splitter theorem. So what it says is it breaks the transversals into proportional segments. Um, I picked this one because of the right transversal. If I start down the transversal with x, x over, I need to know what this segment is right here. It's not labeled. The entire thing is 11, this part is x, subtract them to make an expression. So this right here is 11 minus x, and I'll put that in the bottom spot. So just be aware of that if you see the on the, on the uh, the quest. And then I'll come back to where x's go across 4 over 9. I see a minus sign, so put that in parentheses. I will work left to right. Cross multiply. 9x equals 4 times 11 minus x. Distribute. 9x equals 44 minus 4x. Let's add 4x. 13x equals 44. I'm going to recopy it up here and divide. And I'm okay with 44 divided by 13. That does not simplify. But you could divide it and get 3.38 or 3.4. And I will tell you on the test whether you can round and what's round to. If, you're, if you have a question, just ask me. So this is the corollary to the side splitter. Remember, the side splitter is just if those two lines touch, it's a triangle. You work the same exact way. Okay, and last one here. We have a triangle with a bisected angle. This is the triangle angle bisector idea. Okay, so just trying to show you a little bit of everything. So the angle bisected is right here. So that is the angle bisector. Let me draw it and extend it through. I like to extend it through. So where is x? x is on that third side. If I start with x, I'm going to go down that third side and put it over 5. Then I'm going to come back to the side where x is and go to one of the two sides of the triangle. That's 12, that's on the same side as x, over, and now I jump to the other side, 10. And there we go. Again, there's more than one way to set it up, uh, but just make sure your cross products in the next step are the same as mine. So we have x times 10 equals 5 times 12, which is 60, and divide by 10. And x is 6. And there you go. So the only thing I did not do on this video was a quadratic, which is something that you should practice, you should know. But again, if there is a quadratic on the quest, it'll be a simple one that you should look to factor. Okay? So practice uh, some simple quadratics. Page 439 has some good quadratic practice on there. All right, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on Monday or Tuesday.